Shane back with you from the Chart Work. Welcome back. This is John Denver's uh, Sunshine on My Shoulders, a beautiful song, another John Denver song by request. Uh, we did leave it on a jet plane last time. Um, thank you for all your comments and suggestions and coming back and all that good stuff. The thumbs up have really helped me and subscriptions and all that. I appreciate that very much. Um, a really great song in only three different little parts. So I think you'll be able to pull this together. And a neat little trick in the main riff here. This thing, a little hammer on to talk about that you're going to use in many songs. You may as well get a hang with it and get the hang with it in this one. Um, but again, thank you for coming back. And what's going to help us get through this is if you head to patreon.com slash guitar at work and grab these song sheets, I'll be referring to these the whole time. There's one with the finger picking on it, and there are two sheets that have the actual song with the chords over top, etc. So go to again, patreon.com slash guitar at work, be able to follow along a whole lot easier like that. And um, I'll have it here on my trusty iPad ready to go. Um, but again, thanks a lot for coming back and all your support, guys. I'm really having a good time with this, and I appreciate all your comments and suggestions as well. Uh, we're going to need capo 3, as you see here. Capo 3, capo on the third fret. And you're going to need this version of G. You now, there's a couple of versions of G out there. I'm going to call this the Big Kids G. Uh, some people have trouble stretching that ring finger and, and pinky or uh, getting them apart like that, but well worth having. There's lots of, man there's lots of maneuvering you can do if you lock onto that G. Uh, you do not want a four finger G. That's going to cripple you for things to come in this particular song anyway. So you need this song, uh, this G for a lot of songs. May as well know it, that's for sure. Um, the main riff starts, if you're looking at the tablature, you're seeing your picky part there. Um, I'm going to play, I'm going to play the low E string and the B string. Just sitting on that G, the low E and the B. I'm going to give you this guy here. That's called a pinch. You're playing two at the same time. This is where it's heading. Let's take that apart really slowly. So here's your G. And I'm going to play the low E and the B together with my thumb in the middle, followed by the open G string. Yeah, you got that so far. Let's do that again. So you got thumb in middle. That's called a pinch. You're playing two notes together, and then your first finger is playing that G string open. And we go now to the high E, the third fret. So you haven't moved a thing. The G is just sitting there. It's all in the right hand, right? Let's do this again. So pinch, open G string, and then the high E open. Sorry, I mean high E third fret. And then you're going back to the B string here. Again, so pinch, first finger, G string, high E. Good. Now it would be worth stopping tape right there. Just get to take this in small bites and uh, don't try to go through the whole thing. Although you may watch the whole video through to get a sense of the pacing and where you might uh, bookmark things and, uh, and stop things. So that again is the first four notes. Let me do it again. Three, four. There we go. Now this next bit, uh, we're going to hop to a C slash G. C slash G, uh, the chord is, I'm just going to take my middle finger and I'm going to bring them down one string toward the floor, and I'm going to add my first finger to the first fret of that B string. So it's reminiscent of a C shape, that particular device there. Let me do that again. Back to G, back to G, and my middle finger is going to move down one toward the floor, and my first finger gets added here at the first fret. You get all four fingers on. If your thumb's up high like that, you might be having trouble. Let's get that thumb down a little bit lower. That usually enables that stretch with the pinky there. Um, now, the cool thing is that's the shape we're going to end up on, but you see the little, those little hooks over top, uh, the slur indicators, there's hammers. So I am going to uh, hammer the second finger onto the second fret of the D string. And at the same time, he lands, I'm also going to hammer that first finger on the B string. So it's together. Here they are off of there now. Two of them land at the same time. That might take a little practice, you know, a little target practice there. I'm back to G, I'm just gonna do that hammer. Zero, zero, and then those two guys land. So let's do that again. Zero, zero, back to here, and those two land. So you've kept your ring and pinky fingers where they were for that G. Uh, again, that's worth stopping tape for right there just to get the hang of that for sure. Uh, you might be missing with the right hand, you might be missing with the left hand. Uh, come to stop tape there and just get that together. I'll play it now from the very beginning just up to that point. So here's the very top G. Here's the hammers. I'm going to go to the top again. Three, four. And now here's your hammers. Yeah, if your hammer is not sounding as loud as you'd like it to, just practice. It's just all about practicing and landing on there really sure-footed. Just get in there. Give it a good one with your right hand too. You get that, you know, get a little bit more momentum. If you're not picking it hard enough, it might not uh, sound as well as you like. So here's the top again. Good, now once we're there, leave everybody on. I'm gonna play the last three notes in the bar. That would be the G string, and then the high E, and then the B. 
Okay, so we have the entire thing. Here's the entire main riff. Hammer. Here, top again. Three, four, going. Hammer. Good, and that might take you some practice. Don't be surprised. So again, stop tape there. Go round and round all that. That's a lot of the song there already. I'm going to do four in a row just for play along. If you come back and you feel like you've got the right, uh, right timing and stuff, let's just be sure. I'll play it four times through very slowly. Three, four, going. And again. Got to be able to repeat on time. Hammer. And again. Repeat on time. Last one. Good. So that is what's happening in the in the chorus. The song starts with the chorus, which is not hugely unusual, but uh, unusual by sort of today's standards. So it starts with the chorus, and the chorus that is called the main riff. What we just played is called the main riff. It's sort of a characteristic idea of the song. Um, after a few of those during the chorusy bit, he's going to go to an A minor. You'll see. Uh, there's your A minor right there. I think we all know and love A minor, and the, the picking on that. Anytime you see a line going down underneath the note, that's your thumb, your right hand thumb. There's other ways you could do this. That's just sort of my, uh, my standard, how I kind of grew up learning. Um, so every time you see a line going down underneath the note, treat that like a thumb stroke in the right hand. Here is the picking on the A minor, slowly. A string, D string, G string, back to the D, to the B, to the D, to the G, and back to the D to finish it. And those are straight eighth notes, you're counting that one and two and three and four and let's do that again. Three, four, going one and two and three and four and there we go. Now D7, D7, there's the shape right there, I think you know it. And here we go, watch the thumbs there, I'm going to go D string, G string, B string, back to the G. High E, back to the G with the thumb, first B, and back to the G with the thumb. Now I'll call that the tag. I'll do I'll do a couple of main riffs here just to give you the idea. After a few of those, now here's your A minor. There's a D7. go and then you go back to the main riff etc good hey uh, so far so good get I keep saying it but stop tape there get that together and uh, you could do other patterns as well um, and that'd be okay you're just really trying to kill four beats in there there's a couple of guitars on that recording it's hard to when they're crisscrossing on the recording it's hard to tell who's doing what but this is a great version for sure um, in, in the verse section we are literally walking up the key of G the first four chords of the key of G I'm gonna get on that G and you'll see in on your sheet there it's written as verse so uh, the, fir the first couple of bars repeat 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 so I'm gonna play the thumb G thumb again on the D and then two fingers are in there the first and second fingers they go and get the G and B strings followed by the D string Okay, so the first four notes are on G. I'll do this. Let me do that one more time. Here's G. Okay, now very similarly on A minor, but we have to change the bass note to the A string. Thumb, thumb, fingers, back to the D string. So that first bar in the verse, G, A minor. You're splitting the bar right in half. When do you change the A minor? You play four notes on the G, four attacks on the G, and then switch to A minor. The bar is split evenly. If I counted that one, and two, and three, and four, and just like that. One and two and straight eighth notes. Now, the, the dreaded B minor is in there. Don't go away just yet. It's worth it. It's absolutely worth it. If you haven't, if you haven't mastered your B minor, this is a good one because you're having to pick it. You're going to find out. You might get some, you might get some dead spots in there. But there's that B minor. The cool thing about this particular song, you don't have to bar it. You could just play the shape like that because you won't be playing the high E string, so it won't make a difference if you're barring. It might be a nice intermediate step for you to get to the shape of B minor and worry about the bar in a different song. Um, that at least will get you going. On the B minor, I'm doing this. It's exactly the same as the A minor in terms of the uh, strings to pick. B minor. 
that again, B minor. There we go, I'm not barring that, I usually do, but uh, if you're having trouble with the bar, uh, just don't, don't bar it. And here's your C chord, exactly the same strings. So the A minor, the B minor, and the C are using exactly the same right hand pattern. It's only the G that's a little bit different because the lowest note is on the low E string. Let me play uh, those four chords back to back slowly for you and stop tape whenever you need to. Here's G, three, four, going one and two, and A minor, three and four, and B minor, one and two, and three, Good, repeat, come in, three, four, G. A minor. B minor. C. Good, and a word about approaching, especially that B minor, which is tricky for anybody. Um, notice I'm playing the bass note, I'm getting to the bass note first. First finger, uh, get to him first, then it gives me a half a beat to get everybody else settled. Yeah, so you need the bass note first with the right hand. You may as well approach all those chords like that. Get that bass, lo get bass note locked in. If you're assembling your chords some other way, this is a good excuse to reverse that, and then they just land as one shape. So maybe more in time would be G in the verse. A minor. B minor. C. Back to G. A minor. B minor. And C. Good, we do a bunch of those, and then guess what? Your A minor to D7 again, exactly how it was before. And D7. I'll do that again a little cleaner. A minor. <laughs> D7. There we go. Okay, so we could piece the song together, stop tape there, get those uh, this, get those components together. Now I'm looking at the actual song sheet that has the, the uh, lyrics on it and the chords over top. Anytime you see G and C slash G bracketed together, as you see on your sheet there, uh, that means to play one of the main riffs, which would be this guy. That's one bracketed area. So we do that one, two, three, four, five, six. We do that six times before the A minor to D7 come in. So I'm going to play the first chorus and a verse and uh, see if you can play along. I'll go nice and slow here, right from the top. And the intro, sorry, the intro they do it four times. So they're going to do that four times. I'll skip that. I'll go right to the verse, Sunshine on My Shoulders. I'm going to play that six times, the main riff, and then A minor to D7. Here it comes. Three, four, G. One. Back to G. Here's number four coming. Second line, two more to go. G. One more. Back to the main riff, G. And again. Again. Last line of the chorus, four more to go. Two more. Verse. Here we go, G. A minor. B minor. C. G. A minor. B minor. There's a C. And G, second line of that verse. A minor. B minor. C. A minor with the different picking. D7. And G. A minor. B minor. C. G. A minor. B minor. C.
walk it up. C. And one more walk. B minor. B minor. And C. You're back to the main riff. You know it. And you're now in the chorus. You do that six more times. You get your A minor. And D7. That's it. That's it for the song, guys. That's it. Now, learn to repeat that. And I will, I will um, I'll mention that that little move from G to C slash G happens in a lot of songs. That hammer move happens in a lot of songs. So if it's your first four into that, it, it's tricky to get to get it first, uh, to get them both to sound and to aim them, right? And if this G is new to you, it, uh, it'll be a good challenge for you, but it's not, you, you can definitely do it. If you started life with this G, the four finger G, you would kind of get married to that one, but there's a lot going on with this one as well. You need both in your guitar playing life, so may as well get to that one for sure. Hey, and uh, so I'll leave you there. Have fun with it. Meet me down in the comments. Again, go to patreon.com slash guitar work. Grab these sheets. I'll help you follow along. All the tablatures there, all the dots and diagrams and stuff for each of the chords, and also your song sheet. It'll make it a whole lot easier to follow along. Also, uh, happy to answer any questions you might have and comments and suggestions suggestions and thumbs up for a big deal on YouTube. I appreciate that very, very much. You've been very kind to me in that regard. So have fun with it. Another good one. Thanks for that, guys. We'll see you very soon. Bye-bye.